Hi Gemini, welcome to your week ahead taroscope with me Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for joining me. Quick note, these are for your sun, moon and ascendant sign, check them out for all three so that you know which part of you I resonate with most as a reader. With that said, um, I would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love, light. Peace, prosperity, and abundance, and I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise, and they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. I had a complete brain blank then, as you saw. It took me a moment to get into the swing of things. If you are a continued subby, you know Raffi loves you, and if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, and if you should so choose, and it resonates, hit that subscribe button. So your key to the week this week is one of your cards. You have the magician, right? This is your power. This is your energy, your ability. And as a key to the week, it means that you really do have the ability to affect the kind of change or in any area that you desire. Now, remember your ruling luminary or your ruling planet is uh, currently retrograde, so there's something to think about there. And, you know, ask yourself, what does this, what has this retrograde really been revealing to you? There's a reword, right? Redo, redevise, reveal, uh, revamp, relaunch, all of those rewords are about what retrograde energy is. And what has the insight been around this Mercury retrograde? What or who has come back into your life? Consider that right now because this is where the greatest work can be done for and by you in your life. Now, for your actions and options, you've got the two of cards. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> I am laughing because I have a wonderful Gemini human in my life. Um, and just seeing this... <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's just a bit too on the nose. Uh, Taro, this is you showing off, no doubt. <clears throat> So your actions and options, it's really about what you do, right? What you put out into the world. And the Two of Cups is a partnership, relationship energy. You couple this with the Magician card, and this basically says you have choices and decisions to, to be made when it comes to relationships, relationships, partnerships, and relationship status. And it also means that this week, the way that you truly get ahead is in partnership is in tandem by connecting with or to people. This is what's really going to make the difference, I think. Now, when it comes to uh, the options that are available to you, it may very well be, just like you Geminis like to have it, that there are options, right? You've got more than one option or more than one person on the table. For your communications and conversations, you've got the... Um, king of swords so the king of swords is usually an air sign male aquarius gemini libra because you've got the magician card here i'm going to say he's probably likely to be a gemini a fellow gemini so this could be somebody that you're connecting with professionally and it will be through the professional sphere because the the king of swords is in your communications and conversations now you've got this coupled with this two of uh, two of cups which means there is a professional or working partnership here that could potentially be very good for you in some way shape or form now when it comes to those of you that are when it comes to communication in general this week you're being urged to push your own expertise this is about really letting people know why you are the person for the job or why you have um or like why they should pay you the big bucks, right? For those of you that are studying or in some form of academia, you are demonstrating a level of proficiency this week that is basically expert level. Whatever level you are studying at or pitching at, this basically sees people or the world around you look in at you and say, damn, this person is, is truly, you know, or they have either mastery of the skill or the, the subject material, 
or they're about to, right? Now, for those of you that are um, employed by somebody else, this could be a conversation that you have with a superior, with somebody that you look up to or somebody that you want to emulate. And my advice with this would be, when they tell you or sort of explain to you that you really demonstrate a good high level of skill, this isn't about fake humility um, and it's also not about bravado. Be really honest about where you're at, right? And where it is that you want to be. Even if where you want to be is in their position, say that, right? Be really honest, be really upfront about it because the chances are in that honesty and that upfrontness, not only do you make a uh, a partnership or you open the door for a partnership, but you also find in this person a mentor and a colleague that can really help you progress and further your career, okay? Now, for those of you that are business owners, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, people that work for themselves, this is the time for you to reposition yourself as a badass, right? This is a time for you to reposition yourself as a fucking expert. You need to let people know why they should like invest in you, your business, why you're a badass, and quite frankly, why, you know, just because, <laughs> all right? For those of you that are retired and no longer working, this actually looks to me like you are imparting, like this is not in a paid sort of sense, but it feels like you're imparting knowledge and wisdom that you've already got onto somebody. It's like they're saying to you, oh, you know, I know, Ooh, excuse me, <laughs> sorry. I know that that was a big yawn, very big energy shift. Oof. All right. So it's like you're saying to, I can almost like hear the conversation where you're saying, someone's saying to you, oh, you know, I know you did this a lot in your work and I know you don't do it anymore, but is there any chance you could teach me? Or, you know, if somebody says to you, can I buy you lunch or buy you a coffee to hear you talk about A, B and C, go. Because the chances are this could be something that ends up being really great for you, even if there's no financial reward to it. For your love and relations, you have... <laughs> <laughs> the judgment card. Um, so the judgment card, <clears throat> on one of its deeper levels, the judgment card represents a blast from the past. This is where you reconnect with or hear from, get some kind of communication with or from somebody from your past. It's usually quite surprising. And very often with the judgment card, it's so that we can assimilate the lessons from that partnership or that connection. Now, um, the judgment card, because you've got the two of cups here as well, this could literally be somebody that you dated already. Now, for those of you that are single and looking, this could be a literal reconnection. Now, if you've been with me long enough, you know I always say like, no, don't go backwards, just keep it moving. This is one of those times where actually this may very well be a reconnection. Usually it's just for reassess like reassessment and reevalu uh reassessment and um integration, all right, or assimilation of the the lessons. But this actually looks like a reconnection of sorts. Now when it comes to your um those of you that are single, I will say if you are reconnecting with this person the whole relationship will have to look and be very different to what it was before and it will be uh, quite frankly there's you know there's no going backward on this one but it will be very different but in a good way i think now when it comes to those of you that are partnered married or in a long term commitment this is a huge card of change, right? And it usually represents what we would say is like a call to action. This can be where we find ourselves feeling awakened or enlivened in some way. And it's like, okay, I know I need to act on or in my relationship. And the best way to do this, especially this, cause you know, you've got this next to this King of Swords, you have to lead the change this week, right? The change that you wanna see in the relationship, the change or the adaptation that you want to see in that you have to be in charge of it you have to be in control of it this week right it's up to you 
for your money and materials you've got the eight of cups so it's not the easiest of weeks for money and because you've got it next to that judgment card one way that i actually feel that this could show up positively when it comes to your resources is that you find it in yourself to walk away from something that you were going to spend money on because you realize like actually no this is not going to do what it says on the tin it's probably better to wait um, it also suggests to me when it comes to your um, your resources this might be the ending the completion or maybe even for a select few of you the forgiving of a debt right so this could be where you are unburdening yourself financially in some way when it comes to your physical health and vitality this uh yeah i mean two places that you could look at here one this would be your feet and two this would be your endocrine system Excuse me, because you've got the um, magician here, I'm going to say it's likely to be the feet because, you know, there's a dexterous energy to the magician and it's the overarching theme. So we're talking about your extremities, your hands, your feet, etc. And then finally, when it comes to your home and environment, the Eight of Cups, it seems like some of you are spending some time away from home this week. Um, which could be for any number of reasons. You'll have to let me know in the comments what they are. If you would like to book your personal session with me, you can do so on the link in the description box below. Before we uh, go, I just want to say I wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff. Take care and I'll see you soon.